Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what I'm going to do is show you more footage from my recent trip to scale. Now, to be fair, the 19th Southern California Linux Expo in Los Angeles, California actually occurred at this point over a month ago. And I wanted to get this video out sooner, but I actually went on vacation to Niagara Falls, Canada, and I had a ton of fun. And now that I'm back, there's additional footage from scale that I wanted to make sure that you guys saw before I close out this series. So I actually have several interviews to show you guys. So what I'll do is play those back right now. And this video will actually close out the Learn Linux TV coverage of scale for this particular year. But I do plan on going back. So hopefully if all things work out exactly the way I think they will, I'll be there next year. But anyway, let's go ahead and check out the footage that I have for you guys in today's video. So how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Doing all right. So, um, <laughs> Linux Chicks LA. So I was hoping you could just mention, of course, your name and the project itself. And uh, what would you like people to know about Linux Chicks LA? Uh, my name is Sharon Lake. Uh, Linux Chicks LA kind of grew out of the uh, Linux user groups of like the 90s and, and 2000s. Uh, we, Linux Chicks became a, a thing because walking into a group of uh, guys can be intimidating and the whole goal was to bring women into open source and into Linux and to provide a safe and secure and easy place for questions to be answered where nobody felt intimidated. Okay. You know, uh, the Linux Chicks LA group today, uh, we, we kind of, each chapter of Linux Chicks uh, focuses on kind of whatever they want to focus on in their neighborhood. Linux Chicks LA focuses on taking people who are new to open source, Linux, anything computer related, and providing a platform to get them from knowing nothing to knowing something. Because sometimes it's that first step is the hardest. And you just want to take them to say, okay, well this is Python, intro to Python. This is the Linux command line intro. This is a install fest. This is a Raspberry Pi. And that gets them to the space where they're more confident so they can go out into the forums and learn as much as they want to learn, you know? No read the manual comments in our group whatsoever. That is, so, so it's a, a safe place to get started, right? Safe place to get started. I think that's absolutely amazing. Where would you like to, to lead people to to get started, to find out more, to get involved, um, to get started on this process, to check you guys out? The best place to go is to our meetup page. Uh, Linux Chicks LA uh, is the group. Uh, you can recognize us by our, by our pink penguin on the page. Uh, and that's the best place to get started. Uh, we haven't been active in the past few years for reasons. Uh, but we are become, going to become a little bit more invigorated in this past year. And we're probably going to be go online because we're so spread out. So okay. we're, we're experimenting with that. We haven't done it before. But we'll see where it takes us. Well, that's very, very exciting. So um, is there anything else, open, completely open discussion, you would like people in general to know or just get the word out about? You know, it's that it's okay to ask questions. You know, mm -hmm. that's the hardest part that people have trouble with. It's okay to reach out and ask questions. It's not as intimidating as it might otherwise be. You know, but if you need a helping hand, happy to answer any questions, happy to, to reach you through, reach through and show you some resources where you don't have to like struggle to find. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hi there. Hi. So tell me a little bit about yourself and Jenkins. I'm Mark Waite. I'm the Jenkins Documentation Officer, and I'm a member of the Jenkins Governing Board. Uh, we're working to create a great automation server. Jenkins has been around for many, many years, and it's widely used in the world. Over 300,000 controllers, we guess from three to five or more million users using Jenkins and benefiting from it. Wow, so what are some of the things that you feel are, um, I'm sure there's many things that's a great fit for the project, but um, what would you uh, say is some of the best things that uh, someone might use the project for? Many people use it to run compilation of their code, compile Java, C, C++, Go, and then run the tests, and then see how the tests work and look 
through a web user interface. They may use it to process the warnings in their compiler lines so that they get a hint when they've introduced a new warning. They may use it for trend analysis to decide, hey, are we getting better with more tests or worse with fewer tests or code coverage? So um, how would somebody get started with Jenkins? Where would you point them to? Download it from www.jenkins.io. Run it on your local computer. We support local computer operations. You can run it on your favorite Linux distribution. You can run it on Kubernetes. You can run it on Windows. Awesome, so um, open discussion. Anything you want the community out there or the audience of Learn Linux TV to know? Well, we'd love to have more people helping. You can help in all sorts of ways. You can help by triaging bug reports. You can help by coaching other users. You can help by developing code. You can help by writing documentation. Lots of ways to help. We'd love to have your help. Thank you so much. Hi there, how you doing? I'm great. So I'm here at Learn Linux TV and also Linode as well. And we'll go ahead and introduce yourself and let's talk Debian. Okay, my name is Dima Kogan. I am a Debian user since I believe 2000. And I have been a Debian developer for about maybe four or five years now. What are some of your favorite things about Debian? Ah, so Debian is actually very unsexy, so I won't have any flashy, exciting things to say. Um, Debian is very old, it is very stable, so, you know, being able to just use one system for a very long time gives you a lot of expertise, and that has a lot of value. Um, we, uh, Debian has a lot of, Debian is very strict about free software. Uh, we support, uh, I think at this point, something like 11 architectures. So every package that is available on Debian, you know, also exists on all those architectures. So for example, if you have a Raspberry Pi or something, you can run the exact same operating system that you run anywhere else. Uh, as a result, we have a lot of really good cross-compiling tools and all the various kind of infrastructure things that are that are really nice. Awesome. So I'm, sh I'm sure everyone on my channel knows what Debian is, but for the few people that might not, um, where would you point people to to get started and to check it out? Uh, as a user? Yeah, as a user. Uh, so uh, Debian.org is the website that kind of talks about it. Uh, it's you know, it is a Linux distribution like any other, where it is a collection of software and it kind of packages them together and gives you a, a system that you know works together as one cohesive unit, so you don't have to go and find each individual component. Uh, on the most basic level, it's the same as all the others, but it's kind of simpler and kind of safe, gives the basics really well. So what about for a developer, where would you send them? Sorry, say it again? Well, what about for a de potential developer, where would you send them? Uh, I think Debian is a great system for developers as well. Uh, we have an incredible number of packages. I think at this point, we have many tens of thousands of packages. I don't know the exact number. Uh, you know, they all they all exist within the system. They all they, they all build and work together. So, you know, the one thing that Debian, well, uh, distributions in general, but Debian in particular, gives you is that you don't have to spend brain cells thinking about where to get your dependencies and how to build them. You know, what build system you're using. You know, making it all work together because the distribution does that for you, and that has tremendous value. Absolutely. So how would people contribute back to Debian? Where would you send those people? <laughs> uh, well, we uh, at this point we have on the order of, I believe, 1,000 Debian developers. So those are people who have official rights to publish software into the repository. Uh, but anyone who's interested can actually do that with the help of a Debian developer. So you can go to Debian.org, and you know, there's instructions there on how to actually do that. Um, the community is vibrant. Uh, there's a lot of mailing lists. Uh, there are very active IRC channels where you can talk to, where you communicate and get help. Uh, uh, there's a bug tracker and everything else. Uh, uh, I really won't say the IRC channel is incredibly useful. So if anyone has questions about contributing or about anything really, Go on IRC. It is, you will be surprised at how, how many people are on there. Yeah. 
And I, yeah, as a personal note, yeah, IRC is awesome, and I could definitely uh, back you up on that claim right there. And another thing I'll mention on my end is, uh, by the way, thanks to the Debian project in general for all the amazing things that I feel would not exist in the Linux community today had you guys not have led the way and created some major innovation in this space, yeah, so and it is recognized. I wish I could take credit. I can't, but yep. uh, you're definitely right. The project, the project has a lot, created a lot of value for a lot of people. There's a lot of people working on it, and yep. it's just fantastic. The last thing, is there anything, like completely open, anything you want the audience to know? <laughs> I know, hard one, right? Uh, people want the audience to know. Um, so since we're talking distributions, I'm actually going to say that you know, a common question is people come up and say, well, why should I use Debian? Yeah. And I think it is a great distro, but actually my answer is that if you're using something, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, you will be well served to just learn how to use that one distro really well to become an expert in it instead of hopping around. That makes sense. Um, because, you know, Debian is good, but it's not perfect. It has, you know, a lot of works and the like same as any other system. And learning kind of the intricacies of any one system, I think, is, is you will be better served by doing that than kind of figuring out any particular one on kind of a surface level. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate sure. it. Hi there. Hey. So I'm just running around, just getting uh, some really awesome people to talk about their really awesome technologies. So Seth is awesome. Yeah. I think you're awesome too. So how about we just get some chat going about Seth? Sounds um, great. <laughs> so what I was thinking is for the people who couldn't be in attendance and may not know what Seth is, uh, what would you uh, describe Seth as? So Seth is an open source project. Code is free to download and contribute to. Um, we build software or open source storage systems for data center scale storage needs. We, you know, you buy your servers, you bring your servers, you install the Ceph software on top of them, and we aggregate all those NVMe and SSD and hard drives you have into a unified pool and export it out to, to whoever you want over your network as virtual block devices, a POSIX compliant file system, and an S3 co compatible object storage solution. So if you need to build storage for your data center, you got it from us. We are you know, redundant and resilient to, oh, things as simple as, oh, we need to upgrade the server, so we're rebooting it. We make sure the data is still available to up to disasters. Like, oh no, a we got a flood in our data center and lost 20% of our servers, oh, no. but we make sure your data is still available. And, so and, one thing I'll tell you, on my channel, Seth is, it might be number one or very close to um, the most requested content that I do. Awesome. So I feel like this segment's gonna get a lot of attention, but where would you point people if they wanted to know like where to get started to get set up with them? Ceph.com. <laughs> we got good documentation, we got user stories, we got white papers and scholastic artic journal articles. If you want to learn, and, and links to like our YouTube channel with all kinds of to conference talks and, and online tech talks. So if you want it, it'll be there in some format. <laughs> Awesome. So, um, so the last thing, uh, completely open-ended. What would you like my audience to know about Ceph in general? Oh man. Open platform. <laughs> <laughs> Ceph is super cool. It is open source. We love contributors, and uh, we are huge in Kubernetes and open. Yeah, in Kubernetes and OpenStack. So, if you need to have data center scale storage needs, you should check us out. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Like I've said many times now, I've had a ton of fun at Scale. So thank you so much to Linode for sending me to Scale. I wouldn't have been there without them. They actually took care of me. They flew me out there. I hung out with them at the booth, which was also a lot of fun. I met a lot of great people at a great time. And like I mentioned in the intro, I look forward to doing it again. So thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you in the next video.